Hey there, welcome to another Curtis Stage video tutorial. But today's tutorial is actually a lecture. We're going to be talking about the differences between Photoshop and Illustrator. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to look at what the differences are between the two programs, Photoshop and Illustrator. We've been using Photoshop quite a bit in my classes. Uh, we've transitioned a little bit to Illustrator, and I wanted just to kind of talk about why and why we would use Illustrator as opposed to Photoshop. So obviously the number one reason is be the, the difference right here. Uh, Photoshop is a roster based, bitmap based image making platform and Illustrator is a vector based uh, platform. So just briefly how these two things work, the roster side or bitmap side you can see in this uh, scaling up of a circle on the left hand side if that was that would be in Photoshop but the right hand side would be an illustrator this is one of the main reasons uh, that there's a difference between the two what Photoshop does is it applies a color to every single little pixel square on your image or on your computer and by the way all of our computers our TVs our cell phones our cameras DSLR cameras they're all roster or bitmap based uh, image making or image displaying objects. There is no vector based displaying object yet, and I'll talk about more of that more in a second. So when you see a roster based image, a photograph, it is made up of a bunch of little squares, and those squares are filled with pixels. When you see a vector based image on a computer, it is not that. So let's talk about this a little bit more in a second. Uh, just going back into Photoshop, what are the strengths in Photoshop? Photoshop, of course, is great at handling images, right? It's, you know, as you've figured out this whole semester, it's for complex image editing and color correction. In fact, Photoshop was first created as an image editing tool, but of course, now it can be used for so much more. Graphic designers use it. Uh, photographers use it, animators use it, filmmakers use it, motion graphics artists use it. But complex image editing is what it's really for. Color correction, uh, repairing images, removing objects from imaging, uh, images, digital painting, so uh, using paintbrush tools that mimic real tools in the real world that you'd use if you were an artist. Uh, and inside that digital painting, being able to simulate lighting effects that would happen uh, in maybe a real image. So you'll see a lot of compositing artists using Photoshop, not Illustrator. You'll see artists that work for film and TV. They're creating uh, images that are used by the filmmakers to inspire what a scene looks like, let's say. So the, that is something that Photoshop is used for lighting effects on images, and then, of course, true blurring. Uh, this image here on the left, uh, it has some very graphic elements in it. You can see the text are very graphic elements. Those aren't photographs, text. Photoshop can handle that fine. Uh, those, those space worm things, I call them space worms. If you take my, my next class in Photoshop, you'll know what that is. They look like they're very graphic, but they're painted with a paintbrush. With gradients uh, but they look graphic if we zoom in on them they are pixel based and then of course this photographic image of David Bowie blurred colored uh, this is something you can't do very easily in Illustrator that part the background you cannot do that in Illustrator with all the um, the lighting effects and whatnot going on through here and if we look a little closer at this image You'll see what I'm talking about in Photoshop with that text that was in there. This text, right, that's there. If I zoom into it, you can see it's bitmap based or roster based uh, construction here. The, the edges of the text is very stair steppy, very pixelated. If we zoomed even in further, we would just see individual little squares. So Photoshop's trying to make this, um, ma uh, make up this image via squares. Now, one way around this in Photoshop, of course, is to make a higher resolution image. So resolution is the amount of pixels per square inch in an image. So you could create a really high resolution image, 
uh, on ca- some cameras. I have a camera that shoots very high resolution. So when you put it on a computer, you zoom way in. It takes you a lot longer to zoom in to see those little edges, those pixel squares. And that's great, but then the file sizes are ginormous, right? They're really huge. So one of the drawbacks of Photoshop is you scale up in resolution, you, you add more resolution to an image to try to get around seeing these little, uh, these little pixels. You have really big file sizes, so that is a little bit troublesome. And Photoshop doesn't scale well. If I took this image and tried to put it on the side of a building, right, scale it up and and have it as a billboard, uh, if we looked at it up close, we would see all the little squares. If you look at it far away, of course, which we do on billboards, it might be okay. uh, But also this is, um, you know, you're, you're talking about a large file size when you're blowing up something the size of a billboard. When we get to Illustrator, the opposite is true. So vectors are scalable images, right? But they're not really images the way we think of images, like photographic images. They really, we want to think of of them really as graphics. They are computer-based graphics. So a vector is a mathematical equation that gets scaled. This means that the scaling is important because this means that you can change the size of the image. So to whatever size you want, and the computer is going to scale those graphic images uh, to whatever size you need them to be on the fly, right? Really, what a vector is doing is it's storing instructions, whereas, you know, Photoshop is individual pixel squares that are getting, they're, they're kind of assigned to a square on the image. Uh, so colors are assigned, and that square doesn't change. In a vector, the mathematical equation draws the line or the shape, and as we scale that image, zooming up or zooming de- zooming in, zooming out, or actually just making the image big size bigger, the graphic size bigger, what's happening is the math is scaling on the fly as well, so it retains that quality throughout the whole image no matter what scale it's at. So it's resolution independent. That means that a vector graphic can scale. Um, And so really, really big idea there for Illustrator. When you're using Illustrator, it's great at at graphic images. So crisp, smooth shapes, and which means you can create precise objects, right? Very precise. Uh, There is no pixel measurement. You're doing mathematical measurements. So also Illustrator is known for illustrations, clearly, logos and diagrams. I do not edit images in Illustrator, ever. That happens in Photoshop. And conversely, in Photoshop, I rarely create logos. I know we did that in the previous demos and and your previous projects for my classes, but Illustrator is really where you want to create logos. Illustrator is really great for print, and the reason why, of course, is back to that scalable. You can scale any graphic image that you create to any size, and it'll look good in print. Even though your printer is making the print based off an array of what feels like dots or pixels, it's still scalable. And so you can have a really sharp, clean, crisp image uh, at any scale. So if you were to put a photograph in Illustrator, it does not become a vector. And vice versa, if you put a vector in Photoshop, it doesn't, now Photoshop doesn't handle it as a vector. It, it kind of does. It, it's, it's better to go for, uh, from Illustrator to Photoshop than vice versa, but both of them can happen and later in this tutorial we'll do that. Okay, so once again, right, Illustrator really good for graphic objects that are lines and shapes. They're not complex. They, although they can look complex, they're usually not as complex as Photoshop, where it is using lots of different uh, image manipulation uh, in constructing an image. Illustrator, you want to confine things to much simpler. It doesn't mean you can't do complex drawings in Illustrator that look really amazing, but uh, illustrations primarily. Really, you want to keep that, uh, keep the photographic idea 
out of Illustrator. All right, so let's jump into Illustrator and just kind of take a look at the interface a little bit and look at the differences between it and Photoshop that way. So very first thing I want you to look at is layers. Layers work a lot differently than Photoshop. I'm going to toggle these closed. I have a lot of artboards here of different graphics. You can see all these, right? They're graphic shapes, very geometric, right? Illustrator does that very well. So if we look at this one right up here, you can see that layers, I'm using all of these different layers as actual different artboard graphics. And if I open up abstract one, forget all these right here. If I just open up abstract one, this is all the elements that are in this image, this graphic image. I'll toggle this open and you can see all those different shapes that are in there. The layers panel works a lot different than Photoshop here. Yes, you're still stacking things up on top of each other. But the layers that are in here are called paths, right? They're not, so there's, so think of the layers panel in Illustrator as having multiple layers within a layer. So this is a layer right here. And when I toggle it open inside this group right here, these paths all could be considered individual layers if we were comparing it to Photoshop. Now, I want you to look really closely. We've got eyeballs that turn on and off, right? Just like, just like Photoshop, we've got a lock. But you'll notice right up here in this layers panel, there is nothing like Photoshop has. I'm going to bring Photoshop back over here just for a second. When I open up the layers panel here, and we see the difference here, right? All these layers are individual, right? I could group them all together and make one group. And that would be similar to, to how Illustrator works. But you'll notice there's no blend modes, there's no opacity or fill right here, none of this stuff that happens and no, no masking area down at the bottom here. If we go back again to Illustrator and I'll just pull the layers palette off, you'll, you'll notice there is a bottom area down here. It looks a little bit similar to Photoshop's. Uh, it has an add a layer, right? So if I, uh, click on abstract one and I add a layer. There we go. I got a new layer above right there. I can throw that in the trash same way. I've got a layer sub layer, right? So let me add a layer here and then I'll create a sub layer. So now you've got a layer within a layer. Okay. So that can happen. So it's kind of like a group and then layers within groups. So we've got that happening. We've got this little area right here, which is a clipping mask. So similar to a mask in Photoshop. Uh, but quite a bit different. And then we can collect everything to export out. So one of the things I want you to notice is no opacity, no blend modes up on the top here. Let's look over here to the right hand side. I'm going to toggle this open and select one of my objects here. So I just selected this little object right here, that vector path. Oh, let me zoom into it. I'm going to command plus and zoom way in. Let's look at the line fidelity of this. Amazing, right? When I go in very close here, you do not see any pixel stair steps on here. That's because the computer is getting some commands from Illustrator right now on the fly. When I zoom in and out, it is getting commands saying, redraw this shape on the fly to perfectly render that curve right there. And that's why we don't see any bitmapped stair stepped uh, to that object. If I come in here and I drew this in Photoshop, I've got a similar curve and, and I zoom way in, you can see just like I was showing you earlier, look at that. Now I zoom way in, right? And I've got those stair steps. It looks good zoomed out, right? Because that's, and maybe that's all, no, nobody might ever get closer than this on this object. And if I printed it out fairly small, you might not ever see those uh, stair steppies. But here, uh, we've got none no matter what. All right, I'm going to zoom back out. Now I'm clicked on that shape right there. And I want us to notice when I'm clicked on this shape that right there in the path, right there, I'm on that path. How do I know I'm on this path? Do you see that little circle right there? 
and that little box right there, that double circle tells me that I'm clicked on that path. If I go right here and I click on this path, let me scroll and I'll find, oh, there it is right there. So there's the path that I'm clicked on. If I'm clicked on this path, there it is right there, right? If I want to click on multiple paths, I can. Well, let me click the whole object. Look at how it selects all the paths. So if, if I'm on abstract one, see how every single path gets selected. Uh, let me click off that. If I just click on an individual one, see how those are not selected now. Nothing else is selected now. Here's everything selected in the layer abstract one. So I can click and select everything. If I want to click an individual path again, I'm on that individual path right there. I know I can edit that and you'll see automatically there's a transform tool within the, the black arrow tool in Illustrator. This is a selection tool. This is the move tool. I'm, I'm having the toolbar side by side. Here's Photoshop's toolbar. Here's Illustrator's. That move tool in Photoshop right there is the equivalent of the selection tool in Illustrator. Now, this direct select tool is completely different. So let's talk about those really quickly. The selection tool, you know, selects and moves shapes and you can scale in this thing, right? You can scale and kind of warp and transform and all that stuff. It, it's a transform tool. Okay. The direct select tool, the gray arrow tool, lets me individually edit anchor points. This is very important, the difference between these. Photoshop doesn't really have that up here. It has it when you're editing uh, using the pen tool. And we did that in one of my demos for logos in Photoshop. And it looks like this gray arrow tool right there, the direct selection tool there. So the equivalent tool in Illustrator is this one. Okay, so I can go and individually edit any one of these anchor points. You'll notice when I click on each individual anchor point, and I'll zoom way into it, right? I'm clicked on that anchor point. I can edit just that anchor point, not touching the other ones. Let me undo that, Command Z. These are Bezier handles, and I can adjust, right, that path that was drawn here with those handles, okay? So very important uh, to understand the difference between this tool and this tool in Illustrator. Now, let's talk a little bit about color, how that works in Illustrator. So I've got a, a same kind of color uh, tools right here. I've got my fill tool in front and my stroke tool in back. That's different than Photoshop. Photoshop down here has the fill, has the foreground and background. It's not the fill and stroke. Stroke is an outline. So if I click this and I want to add a black stroke to this object, look at that. I just added a stroke to the object. A stroke is an outline. There we go, right? If I click that again, so I'm going to go back to it and say I don't want a stroke, I can easily take that off by clicking this right here and get that off. So I have to click on my object, click that, stroke gone. Now with this fill, let me go switch back. I can, I can reverse them by the way with this little tool, right? Which in Photoshop just changes the foreground and background. This changes what is, I'm swapping the fill and the stroke. So let me click back on the fill and I can easily change my fill color by double clicking this and just like in Photoshop, it brings up a color picker. And I can click OK, and I've changed that color. Command Z undo. Um, so I can double click that. Or I could have my um, color panel open. So if I went to Window, Color, I've also got Color Guide, Color Themes. We don't have time today to get into all those, but I can click my color panel. Now, when I'm opening the color panel, this is really important. I like to expand that bigger so I have way more choices here feels more like Photoshop in this color guide okay that's that individual color swatch all the light and dark in that color right now let's say I wanted to create a uh, I want to go up here and completely pick a different color up here I've got gradient I've got uh, here's some different fill colors so there's a color look at that there's a magenta color you'll notice my color panel right here this that I opened up and this is different than Photoshop. Photoshop doesn't have this. 
it will correspond to whatever my color looks like there, right? So if I go here, I'm making lighter colors, darker colors, right there. These three lines will give me some different options in here. So I can go RGB, right? I can go CMYK. Uh, I can go to WebSafe colors. So I like to go to RGB in here. And now I've got all the color possibilities here. So I can click that. When you have the color guide open, you can go in to change, you know, into colors. They have different kinds of fun color guides that can kind of be helpful when you're selecting colors in Illustrator. So you can kind of go, oh, I like to go with the pop art color guide and then use those colors, right? So maybe I want to do something like that. And look at how I just clicked and even dragged that color right onto my shape. Pretty cool. We go back to color here. And again, so I can really freeform switch these colors in here. And Photoshop doesn't really have this tool. If I go back right up here, right, and I click here, I'm clicking an individual color swatch and it's giving me all the possibilities of um, tints, not quite to shades because it doesn't go into black, um, but it's the pure color to a uh, tint of that color. So it doesn't go into the shades of that color. It's not going into the dark, darker than the solid pure color. Illustrator is not going to go darker than the pure color you picked in the swatch right up here. You just have to have a darker version of the color in a swatch, right? So here's a darker color and you notice it looks like it's getting towards black, but really it's going to the pure form of this color. Here's the tint and here's the pop the only possible shade to that actual color. It's not going to go further to black here. And that's a big difference. Photoshop doesn't have it. Now, of course, if I go to RGB, I'm seeing all the way to black in every color. So, so here's like cyans right here. Here's cyans. I'm going from light, white, all the way to black through cyans, right? And this is all the cyans. I'm just kind of clicking up through that. So when I go to that RGB color guide, I get that. Hue, saturation, and brightness, same thing. If I go to CMYK, same thing. CMYK, of course, is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. RGB is red, green, and blue. And hue, saturation, brightness, just so we're clear on those. Um, let's talk a little bit about gradients. So I can change this into a gradient, which is pretty cool. So to do that, I want to open up to Gradient, right? It's got its own panel here, unlike Photoshop. It's going to seem weird to you at front at first. I've got a linear gradient. When I click it, it's going to go dark to light. I've got a, right? And I've got some, I can edit these gradients, picking, picking the gradient, right? I can go and edit any gradient in here. I can go and kind of transform this gradient here. You'll get this line here and you can kind of choose how you want your gradient to happen. Pretty cool. You can go here, pick your colors of your gradient. So if I click this one, if I double click, I can say, oh, I want my gradient to be orange to this purple. Pretty cool. Is that purple? Uh, kind of a bluish. Okay. Very cool, right? And I can also go and say, well, I want it to be a, a circular or radial gradient or a linear gradient. And again, I can change that gradient. Pretty nice. Again, Photoshop has a really nice gradient tool, not as good as this. And of course, this gradient is vector. Feels like it's because it goes from dark to light, it gives you some lighting effects, but they're not really lighting effects. It's a mathematical equation. Let's talk a little bit about some other tools that we can use in Illustrator to edit vector shapes. So you'll notice obviously pen tool and I have some demos that you've already done using the pen tool. I've got a graphic shape tool. You're going to be using that when you use the Pathfinder and when you do the Angry Birds tutorial. So those are pretty cool. Uh, there's a paintbrush in here and it's not like a regular paintbrush that you'd see in Photoshop. It does not have, uh, since it's not pixel based, it's going to, it's going to be drawing a mathematical equation with the brush. I don't use it that much, but it is pretty cool. So you can fool around with the paintbrush in here and go pick different paint strokes uh, that are, and let me open up that uh, panel just really quick so we can kind of see that. 
So you've got some uh, brushes here and let me add some brushes. Let me get a, let me get what's, uh, how about a bristle brush library? So it feels like Photoshop a little bit more. So I'm going to pick that and I just converted my stroke because I was selected on this object. Look at that into a bristle brush. If I zoom out, maybe it'll look a little bit more like a brush, but if we zoom in, you're going to see it's not really a, a, a brush. Look at that. It's just a bunch of graphic shapes all overlapping each other. Much like Photoshop is a bunch of squares, but let me draw something here on top of my, on top of this. Let me draw something here. Oh, let me draw something out of bounds here. Because in Illustrator, you can use this out of bounds area. Uh, unlike Photoshop, you can use the gray area over here. So let me, let me paint something over here. So there I go. It's out of bounds. That would not show up if I exported this out which is really cool. That means you can store things out there. So let me use my zoom tool command plus that's the same. And let's, let's look at this. If I go to my uh, move tool after I've painted this, look at this. After the fact, I can change this brush. Pretty cool. Again, it feels like a real paintbrush, but it's not. If we zoom in close and that's fine. You know, if we zoom in close and look at the edge of this, you can see it's just a bunch of little graphics making up this brush. Now, here's what's really cool. If I zoom out on this, I can edit. Let me move these panels out of the way here a little bit. If we zoom out, I can edit this with my direct select tool and edit this almost like I drew this with the pen tool. I didn't. I drew it with the paintbrush. And look at how I can edit each one of those anchor points. I can even add anchor points to this brush that didn't exist. Let me click here. Now, if you have your toolbar that does not show your add um, a um, anchor point on here, let me go down in here and add that. If I go down here, there's three little dots, and then I go to my pen tool, there's add anchor point. And now I can add anchor points to this. Look at that. And then I can go here and edit those anchor points. Pretty cool. So I completely can alter my brush stroke after I drew it. You cannot really do that in Photoshop. So very interesting. All right. That's, that's kind of cool there in using the brush. Let me use a different brush that I think you're going to like. This is called the blob brush. So this tool is a little bit different than the paintbrush. It feels a little bit more like a, a paintbrush in Photoshop and I use it to fill in shapes. So let's say I drew a shape uh, with the pen tool uh, and I created kind of like a shape and I wanted to kind of, but I, it's kind of an unconventional shape. I can fill this in clearly just by filling in its fill down in here, but I can also go to the blob brush and kind of fill in if I hand drew something. So let's say I brought something in from Photoshop, I scanned, and this is going to be another demo. If I scanned a logo and I brought it in, the blob brush tool is what I use to fill in my hand drawn areas. That'll be another tutorial. So we'll use this blob brush again. So I just wanted to kind of show you this blob brush tool now, fool around with a little bit. It still makes, it still makes, um, you know, kind of individual anchors, but the anchors are a little different than the paintbrush tool. If I, did a similar brush here. Watch this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click this. See how these anchors are on the inside of this path, but the blob brush, the anchors are on the outside of the line you make. Huge difference in Photoshop. I mean, excuse me, huge difference in Illustrator. And this is why I love the blob brush to really fill in artwork that I brought in. So again, if I scan it, take an image off my phone from Illustrator, bring it in, uh, I've, I've got it. I want to trace over the top of it. I'm going to use the, the uh, pen tool to create the lines, but then when I fill in colors, I'm going to use the blob brush tool on a layer below my line. So we'll be doing that as a specific tutorial. That's going to be for uh, your next class. All right. So this is, I'm going to use the uh, black arrow brush move tool to delete those objects. Um, well, actually, let me, uh, let me bring the blob brush in, paint something in here, just random shape here random shape. And then I'm going to use another tool in here that I think is pretty cool. We've got the eraser tool, right? Watch this. I can erase through this. And when I get my 
direct select tool. Look at that. I've got two shapes that are now separate with that eraser tool. That's something that's going to probably come in handy for you. So another tool that I really like besides the eraser is the knife tool. Now I'm, I have it on my toolbar. And again, if your toolbar doesn't look like this, click these little three dots and, and go up and make sure that it says advanced right there. And it's going to take you out of the basic mode. You want advanced uh, for that toolbar. So I, I want to make sure that I've got that. Let me get my tools back on. I click right there. So now I've got inside this the knife tool. I really like this knife tool because I can kind of do something like that and check this out. Now this is a separate shape that I cut into that. Really great. Love this for drawing an illustrator. Um, and when I'm doing logos and stuff, I use this quite a bit. So I'm going to delete that. Now let's say I wanted to add a gradient to this. Okay. I want to go back and add a gradient to that shape. Again, I'm going to open up that gradient panel. If you don't have it open, there it is right down in here. After the fact, again, I could go and add a gradient. Watch how I can just with the gradient tool, drop that right on that. I, I didn't mention this before, but you could just drag it right on there. And of course I could edit this by double clicking and getting into the, and changing the color. And so let me go here, click, go red, and it's going to change that gradient. And again, I can to any shape on the fly, change what that gradient looks like. If I want to add a stroke to this and outline to that shape, right? It's got no outline. I just click right here on my stroke right here or up there on my options bar. And I can pick a solid, I've got a bunch of gradients loaded in, but I could pick a solid shape and I can increase that stroke right there on my options bar right here, increase the stroke. Um, if I click on the fill on my options bar, I've got the opacity right up top instead of on my layers. I know this doesn't look like it's doing anything, but I'm changing the opacity on it. Very nice. All right. So those, you know, some little differences between Photoshop and Illustrator. There's a lot of tools in here that over the next couple of tutorials we're going to use. You're going to use the Pathfinder. You're going to, in our Angry Birds tutorial, you're going to use a bunch of tools in there. And then when we do our logo uh, tutorial, you're going to use a bunch more tools. So um, that is pretty much the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator, giving us a little background on Photoshop. Once again, Curtis Stage video tutorials, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.